Please consider becoming a patron of Myth Vision Podcast. You'll get early access to every video, including this amazing one. And you can ask me personal questions, private message me, anything you'd like. Professor Elaine Pagels, Jesus turns to his disciples and he said, who do men say that I am? Who do men, if I, if I could say it in, in modern terms, who does everyone think that I am? Well, it differs in the different Gospels. Mark's Gospel, as you know, uh, the disciples say, people say you're a prophet, or maybe Elijah, or maybe you're John the Baptist, or somebody like that. And, you know, Peter gets the right answer. You are the Messiah. Now, the Gospel of Thomas, the secret Gospel, takes it further. Um, Peter in this says, well, you're like a righteous messenger, which means Messiah. Matthew says, well, you're like a wise teacher, which means a rabbi. And Jesus is called a rabbi if you're reading Matthew in Greek, in which the language in which he wrote. But then Thomas says, Master, my mouth cannot even say who you are. And then Jesus takes him off and speaks to him privately. And the others say, what did he say? And they say, he says, I can't. If I told you what he said to me, you would pick up stones and throw them at me. Now, there are two things you could get stoned for stoned to death. One is for adultery. Doesn't seem to be a case here. The other is blasphemy. And so presumably in the Gospel of Thomas, Jesus said something that the disciples would think was shocking. Later in the Gospel, Jesus says, um, I am the light that is before the universe. I am all things. All things come from me. All things return to me. Uh, lift up a rock and you will find me. Split a piece of wood and you will find me there. Now, that's a very poetic statement, but it suggests that Jesus is speaking as the kind of energy that brought forth the universe before there was a world. Jesus speaks as the divine energy manifest in the world. It's a very powerful picture. And the only image you can use for God's energy in the world is light. And so he speaks as this light, which is energy, God's energy. And later on, the Gospel of Thomas says, Jesus speaks to his disciples and say, uh, uh, whoever accepts my teaching will become like me, and I will become that person, and the mysteries will be revealed to him. And that's based on the sense in the Gospel of Thomas that Jesus comes from the divine light from which this amazing universe came forth, and that you also come from that same source from which Jesus came, that, w that everyone does. Later in the Gospel of Thomas, Jesus says, you come from, from the, the divine source, you come from the light. Um, you know, you are also a part of the same being that I am. So the Gospel of Thomas teaches that Jesus comes from the divine source, but so do you. You have within you the energy uh, of, of the divine light because we're created in the image of God. So there's a teaching there about not only does Jesus come from the divine source, but you and I and all beings come from that source. And that can sound shocking because it makes us almost the same as Jesus, but that is what the secret teaching suggests. This is mystical teaching. It's, it, it's very similar to Jewish mystical teaching, that everything in the universe comes from God and returns to God, and that all of us are part of that. So it's quite different from the New Testament that says, Jesus comes from God and you don't, I don't. We have to be saved first. Well, that's the basic teaching. But the advanced level teaching says, yes, but when you after you understand that, you understand that you and Jesus uh, come from the same place. And that's why the Gospel of Thomas speaks of Thomas as the twin. His name means the twin. Thomas is a nickname. And 
he's called the twin. But here he's understood to be the twin of Jesus. And he is the disciple who represents you, the disciple hearing and reading the story. And you discover that you and Jesus on some level are twins, spiritually speaking. Now that's blasphemy from the point of view of orthodoxy. You can't say you're like Jesus. That is totally wrong, right? But that is what the secret teachings suggest. And that's why they're dangerous. Because if you're immature and you have a swelled head, you can say, oh, okay, I'm God. I can do anything. You could take it in a very immature, you know, self-aggrandizing way. That's why these are secret teachings. They're not meant to just throw out to everybody because they can easily be misunderstood and trivialized. It also seems that the reason that it was such a problem is it's anti-authoritarian, because you are the authority. There is no, in a sense, uh, it seems like the Gnostics take that road and say, no. It almost has a Pauline hint to it, because Paul says, the super apostles, he kind of mocks them in a way, like, Derek, that's exactly what the Gospel of Thomas teaches. Jesus teaches Thomas, I'm not other than you. You have to become like me. You have to develop your spiritual awareness to the point where you can not just ask me for the answers. I am not your master, he says, because you have come, you have, you drank from the same spring that I drank from. You have the same water of truth. You have to find a a spring of living water within yourself, as the Gospel of John says. So in the Gospel of Thomas, that's why Jesus doesn't answer your questions. He says, figure it out. Ask yourself, who do you think you are? Mm -hmm. And, And that you need to make those discoveries because you develop a sense of your spiritual capacity and with humility. Is it safe to say there is a progression uh, of the identity of Christ in terms of the New Testament. Because this comes to dating on Thomas, it appears. Uh, there seems to be an evolution. Like he's, There are things Jesus does in Mark that seem demigod-like. Like almost like, yeah, he's more than human here, guys. But then when you get to John, he's creator. He's, he's through him, the logos, that all things are created through him. It, it just seems like there's a progression. And Thomas gives the hint by saying, you're also one and the same. Yes, and the Gospel of John at the end, Jesus says, the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. That is, what you've heard so far is not all. <laughs> it's only part of it. It's only the beginning. You will, you will discover more and more. And the Gospel of Thomas says, yes, you need to discover more and more. And, and go beyond the initial teaching about Jesus, which isn't wrong. It's just partial. And you have to develop your understanding more. And, and that's given to you by God because you're created in the image of God. And that's what this text means by the divine light. It's rather the way the Quakers actually teach that everyone, every person has the divine light within. They may not know it. It may be so buried they don't have any idea that within each of, each of us there is a potential link to, to, to the divine source from which we come. That you may have access to that if you look for it, but you may not even know it's there. And most people don't. <laughs>